So shifting our focus just a little bit, actually bringing us back to something that you talked about a little bit earlier, but I want to make sure that this question is answered. Uh, there are women who are wondering about the role of HRT. You talked about HRT earlier. For those who missed it, it is hormone replacement therapy. Uh, so we want to know in managing the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause, can you walk us through the pros and cons of HRT and help us understand how to determine whether it's the right choice for us? Sure. Great question too. So I want to define, so hormone therapy, we don't use that when you're perimenopausal. When you're perimenopausal, we use just the birth control. Let me define that too. So your body, your your uterus um, and your ovaries, your ovaries sit, we kind of sit like this. So your ovaries sit and the ovaries jobs are, are where the eggs are. And the eggs that we, as women, we have all the eggs that we're ever going to get when we're born. So the, the menopausal phase is the phase of those eggs not being able to be viable anymore over time. I want to explain that. The body, the uterus needs estrogen and it needs progesterone. So the ovaries themselves make the estrogen and then the progesterone helps the lining of the uterus. So when we talk, when we talk about birth control and hormone therapy, we can use either estrogen, estrogen with progesterone or progesterone by itself. With perimenopause, like I was saying, you're still in that phase where you're still having cycles. So we don't do any hormone therapy necessarily for that, but we can do contraceptive or birth control for the perimenopause population. Menopause population is where we use those three options that I was saying. Now, when it talks about pros and cons, so pros, I have women on hormone therapy that all their symptoms are alleviated because I'm giving you that estrogen that has been depleted to help restore some of those symptoms. So that is a pro. That's the biggest pro. The other pro that we don't talk about is bone health. So I have a lot of patients, for example, who had breast cancer, unfortunately, in Black women a little earlier. So maybe in there, I have a 32-year-old patient, for example, who had breast cancer and, you know, now she's in this situation where she doesn't have any hormones naturally from her body. So for that type of person, what you would have is your estrogen and your progesterone, you need to replace them. And the reason is because the bone health actually starts to go down when estrogen is lost. You also, going back to the question about stroke and heart attack, it also helps the stroke and heart attack risk when you're younger. Now, another pro is going to be some people, some people, not all people have improved libido. Not everybody though. I've seen women who are on therapy and they do not have any change in their sex drive. Um, the biggest con I think for hormone therapy is your age. So when I was saying you're eligible for hormone therapy, when you're between the ages of 50 and 59, the older you get, the more risk come about with hormone therapy. So things like heart attacks, blood clots, cancer risk, all those things start to increase the longer you're exposed to hormone therapy. So that's why we ask women to only be on it for a short while, like really no more than five to six years, depending on your situation. Um, people who cannot start hormone therapy are going to be women who have vaginal bleeding that's unexplained. If you've had a history of cancer, breast or endometrial cancer, um, if you've had a history of blood clots, if you have any allergies or any liver disease, all the all those that population of people won't be able to get the hormone therapy. But I think um, having a definitely having a talk with your doc because these symptoms I I see them and and people get dismissed left and right because of what they're going through, and I think a lot of it is because in the medical community there's not a lot of discussion about it, right? Like docs, a lot of docs don't even know about menopause. So how can they, you expect to go to your doc and get help when they don't know what's going on or dismiss your symptoms? Like you're fine, you're just tripping. And that's not the case at all. And that's what I'm, I'm really here to get that message across. You're not losing your mind, it's your body. I love that you ended your explanation with that because if you look to the screen, this, when I saw this, this broke my heart. I feel like I'm not being heard as a Black woman about my concerns. It utterly shattered my heart. One of the reasons for that is that this is not something that is new. We hear it all the time at Black Girl Vitamins. This is one of the reasons why we are so heavily focused on education. 
I let me just take a moment to say if you're not following our Instagram page, please follow our Instagram page, Black Girl Vitamins, because we focus heavily on education. The graphics that we put out are for educational purposes. The videos, we invest so much in getting knowledge out there because the more knowledge we are armed with as Black women, the better we can take care of ourselves and the better we can advocate for ourselves. The better we will be able to live our best lives and the more information we'll be able to take to our healthcare uh, practitioners for them to you know, guide us and to help us to see some sort of change with respect to how, how our bodies are operating. Dr. Standifa said the very first time I met her, she said something and it has been tattooed on my brain. I go everywhere I go. She said, you are the CEO of your body. I am just your consultant. Dr. Standifo, who's a medical doctor, said to me that you are the CEO of your body. I am just a consultant. So for my friends here who are feeling like you're not heard, it's very sad and you should not feel that way. Something that we can do in the interim is we can arm ourselves with information and knowledge. So uh, follow our page, Abagra Vitamins. We put out something every day to 